Hello everyone and welcome to St. Mary's A-Level Revision videos. This video will be on Maimonides and Negative Theology. Uh, my name is Dr. Richard Bayford and I'm one of the lecturers here at St. Mary's University. In this lecture we're going to look both at Maimonides' life and then at his Via Negativa and the arguments he gives for that. So first a little bit of background information on the man himself. Moses ben Maimon, he was born to a distinguished family in Spain. He lived from 1138 to 1204 AD in and around the Mediterranean, Spain, Morocco and Egypt. He was a polymath and was very famous for his work on medicine as well as philosophy and theology. And as you may know, a polymath is someone who's an expert in many different subjects. He was heavily influenced by the ancient Greek philosophers Aristotle and Plato, and he wrote a number of books on a number of different topics. So one of his most important ideas was what is sometimes called his via negativa. And in his book, The Guide for the Perplexed, he begins by offering several cosmological arguments for the existence of God. And I'm sure you've covered some of those arguments in your courses at school, uh, potentially at some stage St. Mary's, we might upload some videos on those. But uh, the point is, first of all, he goes about establishing that God exists. So after Maimonides puts forward his cosmological arguments, he believes he has established the existence of God as an infinitely powerful incorporeal being. And although Maimonides thinks that this is sufficient to conclude that God is, he doesn't think this is sufficient to conclude what God is. In fact, he goes one further. He thinks we can't say what God is at all. And ultimately, this is because God is completely and utterly one. However, God is not one in the way that you or I are one. Don't panic, don't worry, I'm going to break it down for you. You and I have parts, e.g. two arms and two legs, and separable characteristics, e.g. the ability to think and the ability to see. And we depend on these parts and these characteristics for our existence. Our parts and our characteristics make us what we are, composites. We're composed of different things. And composites depend on their parts and characteristics for their existence. And because they depend on something for their existence, they are contingent. They exist contingently. God, however, is necessary, not contingent. And my Maimonides thinks he's shown that through his cosmological which we won't explore here. And so because God is necessary, he can't depend on any parts for his existence. Depended on parts for his existence, then he'd be contingent, not necessary, and Maimonides feels he's established that God is necessary. So therefore God isn't a composite, i.e. he can't be made up of any parts or characteristics. And therefore God does not have any separable parts or separable characteristics. So it follows from this that God is utterly one. All of his attributes, such as his omnipotence and his omniscience, are all the same thing. If they were different things, he would be a composite, but he isn't. Therefore, God's power, knowledge, goodness, nature, and even existence must all fundamentally be the same thing. And this means that God and his nature are utterly unlike everything and anything else. He is utterly one, unlike everything else, including us. So why does this mean we can say nothing about God? Well, because whenever we say a sentence like God is wise, we're using the word wise to describe an attribute which we apply to humans, to human beings. But, as we've seen, God's attributes are nothing like ours. None of his attributes can be conceptually separated from himself, his nature, his existence, and his, in inverted commas, other attributes. All of his attributes are one, but this isn't the case for us. So note that even superlatives, which are adjectives to the greatest extent, e.g. best, wisest, most powerful, etc., are of no use. To say that God is the most powerful is to imply that he has power, like you and me, but to the greatest extent, 
But as we've seen, this simply isn't true. God isn't powerful in the way that human beings can be powerful. It's not as if you get the powers that I have, powers that you have, the powers that world leaders have, like uh, Donald Trump or somebody like that. You sort of just turn those up to the max and then you've got God's power. No, because our powers are separable from our other characteristics and attributes. But God's power just is his knowledge, goodness, existence, nature, so on and so forth. And so his power is completely different to our power. So even superlatives don't do the job. Therefore, strictly speaking, all we can say of God is that he is God and that he is. Nothing else can be said of him. Strictly speaking, the answer to the question, is God X, where X stands for some form of property or attribute, such as is God powerful, knowledgeable, something like that. Strictly speaking, the answer to the question, is God X, is no. When we say God is powerful, we are trying to refer to one of his characteristics. But God doesn't have any characteristics, at least not in the way that you and I do. He has no separable characteristics. If he did, this would make him a composite. He would then depend on them for his existence, but then he would be contingent rather than necessary. And God isn't contingent. He's necessary. So he can't have any separable character. And therefore, we can't say God is powerful. We'd be attributing a separable characteristic to God, which we simply can't attribute to him. We can attribute it to human beings, but not to God. So we can't say God is powerful or anything else for that matter. Strictly speaking, we can't say God is good, God is knowing or anything like that. Hence the via negativa. We can only say what God is not. Let's look at an example and hopefully that will make things clearer. So can he lift the weight? Can this man lift the weight? Maybe. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say he can. Can God lift this weight? If you mean, can he lift the weight in the way that the previous man did, then the answer is no. The previous man lifted the weight using his body, and God doesn't have a body. The potential incarnation of Jesus aside, God doesn't have a body. And so he can't lift the weight using his body in the way that the man did. But in some sense, God obviously could. He created the whole universe. So this should be a doddle. If you can create a universe, lifting a, a simple weight should be pretty straightforward. So in some sense he can, in some sense he can't. But if strictly speaking we can't say God can do X, God can lift the weight, God can know everything, do we have to say that God can't do X? Surely it would be wrong to say that God can't do X because then he wouldn't be all powerful. And that's one of the central tenets of classical theism, which Maimonides is. Maimonides is a classical theist. If we say God can do X, such as lift the weight, we seem to be speaking falsely. But if we say God can't do X, we're still speaking falsely. So we seem to be in a bind. Whatever we say, we seem to be speaking falsely. So what can we say then? Maimonides suggests that we can say sentences like God is powerful. As long as we don't interpret those sentences in the same way we interpret them when speaking of anything else, such as you or me. Instead, when we say God is powerful, we should interpret this as a negative, meaning God is not lacking in power. But isn't that simply a double negative? God is not lacking in power. Isn't a double negative simply a way of indicating a positive? Cannot not see you means I can see you. Indeed, it means I can't help but see you. So have we really escaped the problem? Well, perhaps we have, as long as we further specify what we mean and always use negatives. So when we say God is powerful, what we mean is God is not lacking in power, nor does he possess it in the way we do or anything else for that matter. So there we've only used negatives but we haven't spoken falsely. Similarly, or alternatively, when we say God knows, what we mean is God does not lack knowledge, nor does he possess it in the way that we do or anything else for that matter. 
As a result, ultimately, we can describe nothing positively to God. We can only say what he's not. Hence the via negativa. And this has led to a form of theological thinking called negative or apophatic theology, which has its, uh, has its adherence even today and throughout the age. Well, I hope you found that helpful and interesting. To summarize, in this lecture, we covered Maimonides, his life, and his via negativa, and the arguments he gives for that. Here I've included some readings that you may find helpful. They go into more detail than I've uh, gone into here. They're all online resources, so they're easy for you to track down and to use. If you found this lecture helpful and you found it interesting, uh, have a look at some of our other videos. Also, be sure to have a look at our website. Perhaps think about joining us for our A-level revision conference or for some of our open days. Either way, thank you for joining me.